Hey friends, welcome. There have been a number of additions to sharpening tools to the market in recent years, and today I'm gonna to review four ways to sharpen your knives. I've purchased everything I will be testing in this video with my own money. None of the manufacturers reached out to me to test their sharpeners except one. The good folks at Zwilling Group who represent brands like Demir, Henkels, Staub, and Miyabi also have a service called Knife Aid. It's a sharpening service, and we're gonna see how well they do with one of these knives. These are brand new. I will be testing the sharpness of these knives with the Professional Sharpness Tester. This is the PT50A and it's accurate to one gram. This is a sharpness chart. A butter knife requires around 2,000 grams of force to break the wire and a straight edge, very sharp, is below 100 grams of force. I'm curious to see how sharp each knife is right out of the packaging. To get these knives equally dull, I clamp each one in a vise and use the weight of this big old block of steel without any added pressure on it other than its weight and run it past the blade of the knife 15 times. So that was not enough. I wanted to get these knives good and dull and that would mean a value of over 1300. That was what I was aiming for. I went a bit overboard on one of the knives. I'll sharpen that one last. It could take about two weeks to get this knife back from Knife Aid, so let's mail one out right away. The packaging contains everything you need to ship out a few knives. They handle all the shipping, so you don't need to worry about calculating the added weight if you're shipping out more than one knife. Make sure the knives are clean and use the protective sleeves they provide. Cover the blade only. Put them in the shipping package they provide. Put them in the shipping bag, which has your address printed on it, and just pop it in the mail. It's almost like a subscription service, where you choose how many knives you need sharpened and how often you need them sharpened. The pricing varies. The more knives you need sharpened, the less expensive it is per knife. As a restaurateur, knife sharpening is a problem that I've spent years trying to tackle efficiently because each week we sharpen about 25 knives. I've developed a method that will be a part of this test that I swear by. It's gonna take a lot to steer me towards another sharpener. There are many reviews on the internet for the many types of sharpeners that are out there. I really like Project Farm, and a link to his sharpener review is in the description. But there aren't so many about the ones I have chosen to put to the test today. So let's unbox the challengers. Let's start with the most expensive one. This is a reputable company that I've trusted for sharpening my tools as well as my knives in my wood shop for decades. Tormek is a Swedish company, and they've released a dedicated sharpener just for knives. This is the T1. This is the home version and it retails for $350, so it's the most expensive option of the lot. Let's see if it's worth the price. The T1 has two wheels. One is for sharpening and one is for honing. And just in case you're not sure what that means, sharpening is a more aggressive removal of steel from the knife than honing. As you use your knife, the edge begins to bend or get wavy. You want to straighten out that bend so you would use the leather wheel to hone your knife that straightens out the bend. The more you use your knife, the tip no longer remains the shape of a V, but becomes more like a U. At that point, no matter how much you try honing the knife, it will remain dull. That's when you would need to sharpen the knife using the diamond wheel on the T1 instead of the leather side. You will find that sharpening is something you will be doing less frequently. For typical home use, maybe between every three to six months. Honing, on the other hand, is something you might do daily or weekly. The Tormek requires no assembly out of the box. It will sharpen an edge at any angle, anywhere between 15 and 20 degrees, which is the angle most kitchen knives fall between. With a shallow angle, the knife edge will last longer, but it will not be as sharp as a knife with a steeper edge. A knife with a steeper edge will be sharper, but it will also require more honing because it will become dull quicker. And right off the bat, we are at a crossroad. What's the edge angle of this knife? I have an angle finder from my other Tormek sharpener, but that's not included with this sharpener. I feel that's kind of unfortunate. So the way I would go about determining the angle of this knife, if I had no gauges, at my disposal would be with a permanent marker. Make sure your knife is completely dry and color the edge of your knife. Set the angle to 17 degrees. That's around the middle. Take one pass on the sharpening side, the diamond wheel, and see what portion of the marker was removed. If most of the marker was removed, your angle is 17 degrees. If the top part of the marker is removed, your original edge is less than 17 degrees. If the bottom of the marked edge is removed, then the original edge grind angle is greater than 17 degrees. I'm hardly using any pressure here at all. I just let the knife sandwich between the clip and just pull gently, making sure that the entire bottom edge, the sharp edge of the knife, comes in contact with the diamond wheel. So how do you know if it's sharp? First, keep track of the number of passes that you perform on each side and keep them equal. 
When you're sharpening steel, you're actually just removing molecules. A little terminology for the parts of the knife. When we're talking about the top of the knife, we're talking about the spine. And when we're talking about the sharp or bottom portion of the knife, we are talking about the edge. As you approach the correctly sharpened angle, the steel at the tip will push over to the other side, forming what's called a burr. Now you can feel a burr form. Believe it or not, the human hand is capable of feeling variations in height as small as one thousandth of an inch or 0 0.025 millimeters. That is usually less than the thickness of a human hair. Keep an eye on your mark line. If it's gone, you should have a burr or the start of a burr forming. When feeling for a burr, please follow these directions and please be careful. Gently pass your fingers from the back of the knife or the spine towards the sharp edge. Do not let your fingers go over the sharp edge and by no means do not pull your fingers in the opposite direction towards the spine of the knife or towards the edge. As you approach the edge, you will feel the burr. It's rough and protrudes upwards. You should feel this burr along the entire edge of the knife. If not, go back for a few more strokes until you do. Now, once you have a burr along the length of the edge, you flip the knife over and repeat the sharpening on the other side, taking the same amount of strokes you took on the first side. So the marker is gone. Let's hone this knife to a razor sharp edge. Now this is super important. First and foremost, make sure the leather wheel is turning away from the edge. I had a brain fart moment when I was sharpening my knives in my wood shop and I placed the knife onto the leather wheel while it was turning towards the edge and completely destroyed the leather wheel. If the honing wheel on this machine is turning towards the knife edge, poof, goodbye. The knife should be angled slightly upwards as you lower the edge of the knife onto the leather wheel. You'll begin to feel the edge seated onto the wheel. Take a few passes along the entire edge, flip the knife over, and repeat the same number of passes on the other side. I wasn't terribly happy with the results of this. Um, I only got into the 300s. I was hoping to do better with this. So I decided to change the angle of attack here. Rather than do 17 degrees, I actually went down to 15 degrees and I resharpened the knife. Let's do another test. 263, a little bit better. Let's see how sharp that actually is with the paper test. Yeah, that's pretty sharp. Let's see how it does with this paring knife. I'm gonna set it to 10 degrees. When I set it to 10 degrees, the plastic came in contact with the wheel. I realized that the whole thing moves forward. It still gets a little uncomfortably close to the sharpening stone. Off camera, I measured this and it was 484. Let's see if we can do better. Three twenty-six. Hmm. I guess I have to keep going. After watching the Tormek demonstration video online, I got excited to see them sharpening a Japanese style knife. I never sharpen my Japanese knives on any machine. I sharpen them on Waterstones. My Japanese knives are made with Western steel as opposed to traditional carbon steel that's made in Japan. Many would argue that I shouldn't sharpen them on stones because the steel is too hard, but I painstakingly do. But after using this machine, I'm pretty confident that it will sharpen my Japanese knives. I don't own a traditional carbon steel Japanese knife. But if you'd like me to do a video about sharpening one of those, leave a comment. I will if there's enough demand. Let's move on to the second sharpener on the list. The Horl 2 is made in Germany. Kind of looks like a miniature cylindrical conga drum. It's composed of two parts. One holds the knife at a choice of two fixed angles, either 15 degrees or 20 degrees. The other rotates past the knife and sharpens the edge. Both sharpening sides are diamond and each side is a different grit. Grit numbers for knife sharpening range from about 80, which is extremely coarse, to about 6,000, which is incredibly fine. The average range of grit typically used is 150 to 1,500. Inside the Horl 2, there are no motors, but the sharpen is filled with gears, but it is not geared to move faster than, say, a cylinder of the same diameter. Without using this system, I am disappointed that there is no other choice of angle other than 15 or 20 degrees. This sharpener is geared more towards Western Japanese knives, which tend to be sharpened at angles of 15 degrees. It's not a bad thing, it's just limiting. Now maybe one day they'll offer another magnetic knife holder that can do other angles or make, the one, make one that comes with future offerings adjustable. So if your knife happens to be at 17 degrees, you'll want to change the angle to 20 or 15 and without using this thing, I'm suspicious. I feel that it'll take quite a while to get it to 20 degrees especially these knives, which are almost as dull as a butter knife. 
And this is not an expensive. I purchased it on Amazon for 180 US dollars. I feel for that amount of money, they should have thrown in the leather honing accessory. It's a $32 add-on, kind of pricey. There are also other available grit discs that can be purchased additionally in exchange for the sharpening discs that come with the sharpener. Another strike against the Horl is the warranty. It's only for a year. Unlike the Tormek T1, which comes with a five-year warranty, and if you register your product, you get eight years. But in all fairness, it is made in line with the standards I've experienced with products made in Germany, so I wouldn't be overly concerned about the warranty, but time will only tell. It's comfortable to hold and feels well made. Let's see how it handles our dull knife. Right out of the gate when I had to raise up the knife holder because it couldn't do a standard chef knife, I was really disappointed with that. But whatever, I did it, it worked. I mean, they do tell you if you're gonna sharpen a tall knife like a vegetable cleaver, that you need to raise up the sharpener onto a taller surface like the cutting board. I was at this knife for quite a while. I mean, it's still really dull. It's clearly not made to take a dull, dull edge like a butter knife to a sharp edge because you, I could have sat here all day. It took me like 20 minutes, a half hour on each side. So I ran it past this unit. This is a work sharp and it's basically a little belt sander. I had it set to coarse, which is very coarse. It's about 150 and it did put a really nice edge on it already. So it's still sharp, it's 446. So let's see what'll happen if we take a few strokes on the Horl. 297, it's respectable. I bet that if I had a leather strop, I could probably get this to be even sharper. So I think they should have included that with this kit. For years, I've been using the WorkSharp sharpening system and I recently upgraded to this one, the Ken Onion version. This is my actual setup at work. I have three sharpeners set up. These sharpeners work with three quarter inch wide sanding belts. Each one of these sharpeners has a different grit belt. One is coarse, one is medium, and one is fine. Clearly for home use, you only need to buy one of these units. But at work, we sharpen around 30 knives once a week, so it would be annoying to swap out the belt for so many knives. Some knives may need just a touch while others need a coarse grit. The belt is pretty easy to change, and they offer belts with grits as high as 1500 grit ceramic for an extra fine finish to a sharp knife. The angle is adjustable from 15 to 30 degrees, so it can be used to sharpen scissors and other home items as well. I'm gonna start out with a coarse grit. Remember, the lower the grit number, the coarser the abrasive, the more aggressively the steel is removed. Unlike the other two sharpeners, you take a stroke on each side until the mark is off both sides, then move on to the other more gentler abrasive belts. After going through all three belts, it still needs to be honed. This is a weighted metal honer known as a mousetrap. This stays near every counter at work and I have one at home. With this, I can keep a knife at work pretty sharp for about a week. So I wanna do a test. I wanna see what this knife will do before we put it on the mousetrap. So without even honing it, it was at 240, which is almost the sharpness of a straight edge. Let's hone it. To hone it, you just put the knife in its place, pull it, and you could feel it. it. Eventually, after like three or four passes, it feels like you're running it up against satin, super silky. That's it. Now let's see what it did. 178, as sharp as a straight edge. I love this thing. If you make any kind of investment, you should definitely buy one of these. It will make all the difference. And you don't need to sharpen your knives every week. You just need to stroke it once or twice through the mousetrap. That simple. It looks like my knives are back and it only took six days. Let's see how sharp Knife Aid got them. Feels nice and sharp. Let's take a look and see what happens here. 123. No effort whatsoever other than to put it in a mailbox. That's pretty damn impressive. Clearly, all of these sharpeners have their pluses and minuses. I really like the Tormek because I feel very comfortable to sharpen Western style Japanese knives on it. Now, even though it has a pretty small footprint, unless you have a large kitchen, it is a little large to leave on the counter. Now, if you use a marker, and you're going to have to pretty much for any kind of sharpening, an angle gauge is really not terribly necessary. But I am surprised that they didn't include this. This is a honing compound. It's what I dress my leather wheel with. It really makes honing a lot better. 
I am waiting to hear back from Tormir because I'm not sure if it's okay to apply it on this wheel. On my other Tormek sharpener, with this honing compound on the leather wheel, my knife edges are like mirrors. This is expensive, it's $350, but if you have expensive knives and you like to sharpen them yourself, it's gonna pay for itself in the long run. The Horl 2, I can see it being useful for touching up a dull edge, but not for taking the edge of something as dull as a butter knife to raise a sharpness. I think it's too expensive for what you get and also a bit cumbersome to use, especially if you have a wide chef knife. The great surprise out of all these was Knife Aid. Very convenient and the knife came back incredibly sharp. If you don't want to mess with sharpening, it's well worth it, especially if you have many knives. Again, Knife Aid did not pay me see this video before it was published or had any impact whatsoever on my review. I am still going to stick with my work sharp system. It's the most efficient, fastest, and convenient way to get a sharp edge on a knife. It is also the most affordable out of all three. It costs $140 on Amazon. I don't know why I'm apprehensive about sharpening my Western Japanese knives on it. I shouldn't be. I know hunters who use this sharpening system to sharpen their hunting knives for far more expensive knives than my chef knives. I guess it's just psychological. The mousetrap honer, must have. I love this product. I like it so much that I'm going to put a link to the description even though I have no monetization with the company as of the release of this video. And here's my tip of the day. Do your math. How much is your time worth? how much are you actually saving when doing things yourself as opposed to using a service? And before you buy anything, think about what it will cost to maintain. How much time will it take to learn how to use what you just bought? It becomes super easy to click buy now online. Walk away for a minute. It'll be there when you think it over a little. Cheers and click something here. Help my channel grow, please.